Stay tuned uh, all the way till the end of the video because I'm going to give a little taste of one of the main lessons that we're going to learn in the six-week course. Just want you to have a little experience. I want to explain kind of why it's so different than what I put forth in the books and why it's important to take the class. It'll totally change the way you draft. Hi everyone. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to talk a little bit about my upcoming six-week course which is an introduction to pattern making with the Barra system from a historical clothing context. Now, I already wrote a book about this and many of you have already used it, but the thing is, is that book kind of skips over a lot of pattern making theory and for good reason. I wrote it specifically so that you would be able to use patterns from uh, old tailor's manuals without having to really become a master pattern maker. But one of the amazing things is that the Barra pattern making system is so versatile that it can be used in a method that is much closer to what the costume industry uses today. And combining these two methods gives you a whole different type of versatility when it comes to drafting patterns on a tailor's block, which is a very specific kind of block. And I'll show you that in a second. We're not going to be using a calculator. We're going to be using Barra tape measures and artistic eye and lots of practice and experience so that we can get used to doing these kinds of things with this system. I think what it offers for a student of this class is it offers a way into learning how to use pattern making and the principles of drafting in a system that takes away the scary algebra and mathematics that trouble a lot of people. And then on top of that, this method opens up the possibilities of working in a lot of different time periods that I haven't written about yet. We can modify an angle based on somebody's posture a lot more easily than we can if we're just drawing the pieces directly to shape. So I hope that you'll come with me on this journey. I'm really excited about offering it. I'm super excited about being able to teach live and in person for the first time, um, but not fully for the first time, but for the first time, like in my own setup. So I'm really uh, looking forward to, to running these classes and seeing how they're received and watching everybody grow. So thank you so much for joining me. And I really look forward to having you in class so that we can make some of these fantastic patterns and you can learn a whole different way of incorporating the Barra system into your pattern making repertoire. Thanks so much. I'm gonna show you really quickly how to do one of these blocks. So it begins just by drawing a set of perpendicular lines and I just um, I draw this with the, the horizontal is going away from me. So this is my length. And uh, I'll just do a basic body block for the mannequin that was standing next to me in the video. So I start here I'll mark this X. A lot of times I mark it A in my videos and I'm just going to find the back waist length. So I go from there with the length tape and I go to M, which is half the back uh, half the length tape, which is the back waist length. And then I will take that and I'll extend it out with two lines. So I've got a vertical and then I've got two lines going along the edges and those are my top and bottom. And so those I will use to delineate the width of the body. So I'm only drafting half the pattern at a time. So I take the chest tape right here and I find uh, M, which is half. So if I wrap this around my mannequin's body, it's gonna be exactly uh, twice this length and that is skin tight. That's the actual measurement, but I want a little extra. So I'm going to add some ease by adding two extra finger breadths in here and then I'll make my mark for the top. And then from there, I'll square down and then that begins to bring me a rectangle that I can use to define. So now I have center front is away from me and center back is towards me. So the next thing that I wanna do then is I wanna find the bust level. And for women's wear, this is where the Barra system gets a little bit complicated because the bust size is not connected to proportion in the upper body in the same way that it is for menswear. So it's a, a little bit different. So to find the widest point, we go to one quarter of the bust measurement, but knowing that busts are larger than actual bodies and we need to, or that actual body proportion, we're going to need to actually bring this up a little bit. So 
I usually raise this one and a half dedo, when a dedo is just one increment on this tape. I raise it one and a half up from where that level is, and this is where the actual bottom of the armhole is gonna go for me. So I'll draw my little line there, and now I know from center front to center back, that's my chest level, and that's, that's like the bottom of the armhole level. Chest is usually defined as a little bit below that in women's wear, but this is where the bottom armhole is going to be. So my next step then is to define the back width and the front width respectively. Now on women's wear, the front width is usually wider than the back width when it comes to going around the side of the bust. Um, in men's wear, it's the opposite. The back width is frequently slightly larger than the front width because of the breadth of the back muscles. So in this instance, most of the time you can find the front width in a garment is somewhere between S and Q. So I'm gonna add S plus I plus half. So S I half. And the way I do that is I'll measure zero at the end, measure to S, and then I'll swing the tape around and then I'll add one and a half to that and then I'll make my little mark next to zero. And that helps me define the width of the front right there. And so then I know that the back needs to be narrower than that. So I'm just going to go S plus one. So I'll start here, measure to S, and then I'll swing the zero end of the tape around and add one extra dedo to that. And that gives me the width of the back. Now, depending on the cup size, this is where things will get different. Because you have a full circumference chest measurement, and if the bust is smaller in cup size, that means the front will be narrower and the back will be wider. And if you have a bust that is very large, then the front is going to be wider and the back will become narrower. And this is one of those things that the Barra system, as I put it out in the books, doesn't really cover. And I think in this class, we'll be able to actually cover this more fully, especially given this grid that we're building, because it makes a lot more visual sense and it'll be easier to understand and retain. So now we're gonna find the back neck width, which is three and a half dedo. So that's I, 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 and a half. And if you're not familiar with these terms, that's fine. When you take the class, you'll absolutely learn what they are. But for those of you that have been using the system and you're looking for a newer, better way to do it, here you go. So now that I've defined the back neck width, I have to define the shoulder slope, and I'm using that as two dedo down from the point of this neck. So I made the width of the neck, and then I went up one, and that's the height there. So now I'm measuring down from there two, and that's the shoulder slope. And the shoulder length, an average shoulder length for your typical C cup is going to be one eighth of the bust measurement. So I'm gonna measure that to there, and I'm going to make a mark. And because it's women's wear, I often will need to put a dart in the back shoulder, so I'm just gonna make a halfway mark along that line so that I know where it goes. Now I'm gonna do the same thing along the front, but there's gonna be a little bit of a change. Here's my center front line, but because of the slope of the human body, my actual neckline will be set back from this edge just a little bit. So I'm going to just make some ghost marks, uh, and that's because I will need to adjust these in a minute. Again, it's three and a half width, and it is three and a half depth right there. So I'm just going to give a dotted line, and the reason is because I have to adjust this based on the bust point measurement. So if the natural bust from high point of shoulder sits about here below the chest level, remember this is high, then you have apex, which is here, but the fullness usually sits a little bit lower. So I'm gonna draw a little circle there to sort of denote like basic breast location. And then you would couple that with a measurement from the actual like off the person. So you would have taken this and put the zero at the side of the neck and measured down the bust line for the bust point. Um, I know that because I measured my mannequin, this is QI and a half from the center of the breast. So there's Q, there's approximately I, and there's a half. So I'm gonna make that mark there and you can see that I'm up a little bit higher here. So I'm just going to lift this up, however much that is, which is not quite a full dedo. So I'm going to move that up the same amount and then just redraw the neckline. 
And what this does is it just gives me a little bit of extra length there so that the bust will be um, comfortably seated. And then I draw an angled line, and of course that line intersects center front slightly lower than where the bottom of armhole is, because remember the apex of the bust might actually be below this line. Now we need to find the front shoulder slope, which I usually define as two and a half in this instance. So I put I, I, and a half, measure a guideline, and then draw the same shoulder width. Now here is a fun tidbit. If you have followed my regular drafts in the other books, then you know that the back shoulder is usually longer than the front shoulder. But I've just measured them exactly the same length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this line just a little bit, and I'm gonna add half a dedo, which changes the slope ever so slightly and makes it just a little bit longer. And we want that because what's gonna happen is we're gonna end up putting a dart in here and pulling it in, or we're gonna end up stretching the front shoulder and easing the back shoulder down so that they kind of meet in the middle. That's kind of advanced pattern making techniques, which I'm not gonna go into too deeply in this course. I'll touch on them, but uh, not too much. So then I'm gonna divide the bot, this little square in the middle is where the armhole goes, and I'm gonna divide that evenly into thirds, and this is where the bottommost part of the armhole is, is, sort, is more toward the front. And I'll divide this front one into thirds as well, and that's the distance between the shoulder slope line and the bottom of the armhole line, and I'll divide that into thirds, and the frontmost part is on the lower one. And the back, I'll divide in half. <clears throat> So now I have these guidelines that I can use to draw my, sh my armhole. And the armhole tends to swoop forward. As you can see in this line right here, you can see the armhole's kind of tilted forward and that's because your arm is here and your arm ends up on the front of your body. You have nothing going to the back. So you need this extra width in here specifically because when you put your arms to the front, you need extra room on the back of your body. So this armhole has been drawn, this back armhole has been drawn, and now we have the upper portion of the body. From here, we can really begin to draw in whatever we want. So let's say, for example, we want to draw a, a, a lady's doublet, right? So the upper portion can stay more or less the same. We don't have to really do a whole lot of change here. Uh, we might want to shape center back, so I'm just going to use my thumb. I'm going to put that right there, and then I'm going to shape center back so that I have a nice curvature. I also might want to have a grown-on collar at center back, so I can take my ruler and just connect these two points right here along the back neck, and then I'll draw a collar off perpendicular to that new line and that kind of takes care of any of the wrinkling at the back of the neck, and I can create a collar that's whatever height I want it to be. So there I have a cut in one lady's doublet collar at center back now, and I can contour it if I want to, I could make it more dramatic if I wanted to, you have lots of options from this point. So then I want to have a back width, and the fun part is it doesn't really matter what I choose for a back width, because I know what my back or my waist proportion needs to be. So I can place this however I want. Let's say visually I wanna have a really narrow back waist. I could do that here, or I could go off of a proportion from the original manuals. So frequently in 17th century ladies' doublets, this will be uh, about 1 8th. So if I put my tape measure here, 1 8th goes to about there. Right, and this is with zero seam allowance. Unlike the ways I drafted in the book, these blocks are done without seam allowances and then we add them after. So I have my doublet back right there. Now you can see I've got a cut in one collar, I have a nice skinny back waist. I'm going to have to adjust some stuff in here when I draft because the front has to be at an angle because once the corset goes on, the upper body is actually quite conical in shape, which means if you, if you understand the shape of a cone, a cone has a curved top and a curved bottom and it has angles like this. So if this is our center front, you can see that it drops as it gets toward the side. So if here's where the cone is, I have to consider the bust as sort of doing that because once it wraps around the body, 
this then folds back and up. So what I need to do is I need to, I know that this point right here is where I need to connect because that's the only way that it's going to fit with the amount of ease that I've put in it. So I know that whatever I draw along this that matches up to this, I have to have a connection at this point or I'm gonna to lose too much width and the garment might end up too tight. So if I have this for the waist, I need to have, here's half, so that's skin tight plus a little bit of ease. So I know I need to come to at least there and then I will draw a nice curved line. And yes, they do cross over here, but I can trace off one and, and uh, cut it out from a different piece of paper. Now what I need to do is I need to find out how long this is. Now, if this is dropping along the side, then consequently this is also going to drop a little bit. So I'm going to measure up from here. I just use the tape that's in my hands to measure this line. It doesn't really matter which one it is because I'm just going to hold it and then compare the length to the other line that I have drawn. So this will come to here now. And now that that's where it needs to be, I'm going to blend this into the bottom of this armhole and suddenly we start to get that nice little sickle shaped front armhole that's indicative of the time period. Next thing I'm going to do is figure out the center front length and then I can just blend one into the other. And I didn't leave myself a lot of room at the bottom of this paper. So I am just going to draw my line and take the point down as far as it goes since I run out of paper down here. And then I know that this is the shape that I want to create. Now I know this might be a little bit hard to see on the camera, so I'm gonna go ahead and sharpie it in so that you can see what these details are. So I've drawn my front. And here's my front neck. And when I draw the collar, the collar will end up longer than this area because I know that I have to actually stretch this part of the neck in order for this to fit well. I'm aware of that and I'm planning ahead for that. And this is one of those things that you get really used to understanding in historical pattern making. So now I will draw the armhole. I'm gonna try to do this as tidy as possible. Okay. All right, there's my side back seam and my point. Now I'll draw center back. Pardon me, I'll draw my back pattern piece. So you can see how quickly and easily this could eventually become a drafting system that you can use for any time period. You could do this for modern, you could use this for, um, for Victorian, you could use it for any number of things. I'm going to mark a little notch right there so that I know that this side of the collar matches up to that seam right there. So that's my basic draft for a lady's doublet off of this grid-like tailor's block that we're going to draft the pattern from. I usually mark these points so that I know where they are in relationship to the body. I put a matching notch there and frequently what I'll do to start placing matching notches, which are very important when you're sewing things together, is I'll just use one of these tapes and I'll measure to one of the proportions. So here's like one eighth goes to there and I'll mark that notch and then the corresponding notch is along the side back there and then I'll make another one that's I'll use S as my guide point and S goes there and then I'll circle that as well notches on center back should be doubled so that you know when you're sewing that you are at center back and there we go a basic doublet pattern in almost no time at all just because we know how to use the power of proportion in our work thank you so much I hope this is enough to to whet your appetite for the class, and I look forward to teaching you. Thanks and have a great evening.